And now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereals shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, run, Husky. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Someone's in a big hurry. Wow, there goes Johnny Jones. Seems like everyone's in a hurry, hurrying to the nearest mailbox. They're entering, while there's still time, the big, easy Quaker Pop Wheat and Rice Contest. They want to win one of those 101 Schwinn Deluxe Auto Cycles. In just a few minutes, you'll hear how you can enter. See how easy it is to win a fully equipped bike worth over $79. If you hurry. Matt Carradine and Joe Moran were mushing along the trail on the lee side of Torngeck Mountain. They had left their claim at Bitterroot Creek six days before. Another three days of travel lay ahead of them before they would reach Whitehorse. The snow was deep, their progress slow. One of the men walked in front of the team, breaking the trail. The other guided the sled. It was 40 degrees below zero. Their steaming breath froze on their whiskers. It seemed as if they were wearing white masks. Hardly a word was spoken between them. But finally... Six days. Next step. Next step. Seems like six years. Forget it. I can't. I can't, I tell you. Oh, oh, oh. I can't go any farther. Look, Matt. Remember last fall? Yeah, what about it? Don't you remember? On the way up to Pitarut, I left some food at Boulder Creek. There's a nice sheltered spot there. If we keep on going today, we'll get to the cache where the food is hidden. Then we can rest up for a couple of days. Hey. There comes a dog team around the bend. Two men. Well, we're not the only crazy ones. Wait a minute. There's something funny about those two. What? They're both wearing white parkers, white dogs. They're wearing white masks. Ah, uh, that's frost on their whiskers. You got a white mask, too. Matt, I'm afraid we're running into trouble. Up with your hands. Oh, no, I know it. Hold up, man. Do what he says, Matt. Get your hands up. Oh, 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 oh. They have no guns, one. No. See if they have any gold in this sled. Okay, boss. Yeah, I got the boat. I'd say about $500 worth. Not bad. You want it? No, I'll leave it where it is. You can drive that sled. What? Wait a minute. You're going to take our sled? You can't. We'll have to pack our supplies on our back. We can't make it into Whitehorse packing a load. You don't have to worry about that. We're taking your supplies, too. Our supplies? No. That's murder. <laughs> if you travel light, you'll travel faster. I, I haven't got any matches on me. At least You don't me... need any matches. It's 40 below. We couldn't stop for more than five minutes without a fire or sleeping My bagger. advice to you, gentlemen, is to keep moving. Get that team turned around, one. Okay. See you, man. See you. Well, let us have our sleeping bags anyway. I'll give you nothing. It's no use arguing with him, Matt. I know who he is. Do you, really? I've heard stories about the White Hawk. The White Hawk? <laughs> a ridiculous name. The only reason I wear a white parker and use white dogs is that they're hard to see against the snow. Personally, I prefer numbers to names. I call myself Zero. (laughs) In other words, nothing. You're a killer. I never use a gun unless I have to. Take away our supplies. Our matches even. That's murder. Leave us here. You don't have to stay here. We'll never make it to White Horse. I almost wish you could, if only to make people stop calling me the White Hawk. On the other hand, if you did get back, they'd have some proof that I existed. 
outside the imagination of travelers who think they've seen me up on the mountain. Now, I'm afraid that to give you matches would be a gesture prompted by vanity. I can't afford it. <laughs> you ready, one? All set. Mush on. Mush. I shall be leaving you, gentlemen. Mush! Come on, Matt. Oh, it's no use. A hundred miles. We can't do it. We don't have to go a hundred miles just to Boulder Creek, the cash. That's right. The cash. It's our only chance. We've got to make it, Matt. Come on. All right. The two men stumbled through the drifted snow. Step by Hello, step, Matt. they fought their way south against the wind. Hungry, cold, they were afraid to stop for more than a few seconds. Night fell, and the northern lights blazed across the sky. On they walked. Their minds were as numb as their bodies. They concentrated painfully on lifting one foot and placing it in front of the other. The sun rose. Left foot. Right foot. All day long. Toward evening, Matt's strength had failed completely, and Joe had to drag him along the trail. Each step was sheer torture now. Oh. No, Joe, I can't. I can't make it. Let me lie down and sleep. No. Just five minutes. If you give up, you'll die, Matt. Use your brains. I don't care. I want to sleep. You can't. Let me sleep. You can't or die. You'll freeze to death. It's only a little way now. Don't lie to me. Can't be far. Matt. Matt, it isn't. That's the creek just ahead of us. Don't lie to me. No. I'm not. Look and see for yourself. That's the creek and that's the gully where the cash is. Look, Matt. You mean it? Look and see. Come on, faster. Sure. A fire, Joe. Something to eat. I'll have plenty. Did you cover it up good? Is there any chance the wolves got at it? No. Here. I'll help you down the slope. Come on. Hey, take a step. Come on. He's just a little way now. There was a hull in the side of the gully. I shoved everything inside, rolled a stone over the opening. It's safe, all right. I can see the stone now. Only it... Only what? The stone isn't covered with snow. The wind's kept it clear. Yeah, yeah, sure, that's it. Here we are. Give me a hand with the stone. Yeah, yeah. There. No! Shut up! There's nothing here! The White Hawk found it! I've got to keep going to town. No. Matt! Matt, get up! Get up! I want to sleep. Get up! Five minutes, Joe. Let me sleep for five minutes. Yes. Five minutes. Okay, Matt. They say it comes sort of easy. We'll go to sleep for just five minutes. Joe dropped to the ground beside his exhausted partner. He stared at the looted cash for a moment and then stretched out on the ground and closed his eyes. Almost at once, he was asleep. Sergeant Preston drove his team across Boulder Creek. But as they started up the slope beyond, King, who was working as a loose lead, broke away from the trail and headed for the gully at the left. The team followed him. What's the matter, King? Where are you taking us? The great dog disappeared over the edge of the gully, and the sergeant stepped on the brake and called to the team to stop. Hold there, ho! Then he followed King down into the gully. The dog was standing beside the two sleeping men. Yes, boy. Let's see if they're still alive. <laughs> They are, King. We can save them. The blanket roll, boy. The blanket roll. Fetch. King brought the sergeant's blanket roll from the sled, and the Mountie covered the two men. The gully acted as a natural windbreak, and as soon as he had cut down a couple of small trees, he was able to start a fire. He melted snow and treated their frostbitten faces while they were still sleeping. Then he made some hot tea and heated some beans. It was not until then that he tried to rouse the man. All right. Wake up. Wake up. Uh, let me hold Sleep. Wake up, man. Here, drink this. It's hot tea. Tea? Drink it. I've got some beans for you as soon as you've finished it. Thanks. The sergeant woke the other man. And before long, with food and drink inside them, Joe and Matt roused themselves from their stupor. They huddled in their blankets close to the roaring fire. 
And finally, we're able to tell the sergeant what had happened to them on the trail. So the White Hawk isn't a legend. You actually saw him. He's as real as that fire. And twice as dangerous. No, fire isn't dangerous. Fire is wonderful. Sergeant, we'd have died if it hadn't been for you. If it hadn't been for King, was he who found you? You never thought there was a White Hawk before now? Well, travelers have reported seeing a white team and a man in a white parka driving along the ridges of Torngek Mountain. But the sun and the snow play funny tricks with men's eyes. What about holdups? We've had none reported. We couldn't have reported ours either if you hadn't found us in time. That's true, and men have disappeared on this trail. They met the White Hawk. Or a blizzard or an accident. Or uh, him. Yes. Well, first, I'm going to take you two to town. Oh, thanks, Sergeant. And afterwards... Yes, King, we found our next assignment. We'll be driving into the mountains after the White Hawk. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Stop! Look! Listen! Here's a warning! The big Quaker puffed wheat and rice contest will be over before you know it. Hurry, get your entry in. Fellas and girls, you've a chance to win a bike, a dream bike, a shiny new Schwinn Deluxe Autocycle, the world's finest bicycle. Yes, the breakfast cereal shot from guns are offering 101 of these knockout bikes worth more than $79 in the easiest, most fun contest ever. Each bike is fully equipped. Everyone has a Stuart Warner Golden Meteor speedometer to tell you how fast you're going. You get hand-operated front and rear expander brakes for safe, fast stopping. And exclusive Schwinn spring fork to absorb rough road shocks. Slipstream built-in electric fender light. In addition to kickstand, chain guard, streamlined tank, battery container, electric horn, and bike pilot compass. No fooling. These 101 bikes have everything, even white wall balloon tires. What's more, models for boy contest winners have a nifty maroon paint job with sparkling ivory trim. Girl winners get special smart-looking blue models. Grand prize winner also receives a Zenith, Zenith radio for his or her bike. Now listen carefully. Here's all you do to enter this easy contest. Finish this sentence in 15 additional words or less. My favorite college pennant on the Quaker puffed wheat or rice package is... Now that's the start of the sentence. All you do is finish... It couldn't be easier. Just pick up a package of Quaker puffed wheat or rice. Look at the back of the package. On the back, you'll find a series of colorful flags. Pick out the one you like best and tell us why you like it. No fancy writing necessary. Here are examples to help you. My favorite college pennant on the Quaker puffed wheat or rice package is Notre Dame. I like it because Notre Dame has swell football team. Or I like the Pennsylvania flag because its colors, red and blue, are my favorite colors. That's all there is to it. You can easily do better. Just a few simple words of your own can win you the world's finest bicycle, a Schwinn Deluxe Autocycle. Write your entry on a piece of paper. Include your name and address printed plainly. Mail with one box top from any package of Quaker puffed wheat or rice and send to Bike Contest, Box 600, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Attention, everyone. Contest closes soon. Hurry. Yes, hurry. Mail tonight to Bike Contest, Box 600, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Now to continue our story. After the sergeant had taken Joe and Matt to Whitehorse, he reported to the inspector and was assigned to the case. He and King and the team headed north once more, and on the evening of the second day, they reached the foot of the mountain. Beyond the point where Joe and Matt had been held up, King found some sled tracks leading away from the trail. He barked the intelligence to his master. Oh, oh there. I'll take a look, King. Yes, this is it. Two sleds swung off toward the mountain. From here, it doesn't look like there's any possible shelter on that pile of rock and ice, but there must be. Follow the tracks, boy. Run, King! Run! The tracks followed a frozen creek, and ahead, the sergeant could see where the stream dropped 200 feet to the plain from a crevice in the cliff wall above him. Near the foot of the waterfall, the tracks swung to the left, where the mountain slope was more gradual. And as the trail started to climb, the sergeant stopped the team again. Hold there! Hold there, I don't know what to make of this, King. I can see the trail, and it seems to lead directly to the top of that waterfall. Of course, that canyon may be wider than it seems from here. <laughs> Tell you what, boy, I think you and I better go up there alone. The sergeant found a sheltered spot and unharnessed the team. The dogs immediately burrowed in the snow, preparing to go to sleep. 
The sergeant covered the sled with snow. And then he and King started up the mountain. The trail twisted and turned. But the ascent was gradual until it became nothing but a sled sticking out from the side of the cliff. It led, as the sergeant had noticed, directly to the canyon from which the stream dropped to the plain. Now the opening of the canyon was reached, and the sled tracks led into it. You're right, boy. We better take it slow and easy from now on. The hawk's somewhere up here, and he may be very close. But the canyon widened beyond the entrance, and sloping gradually upward, it seemed to continue for miles. The sergeant and King kept close to the shadowed side, on and on, until finally... King... Looks to me as if the canyon's widening still more up ahead there. There could be a valley right in the heart of the mountain. If there is, I think we'll have found what we're looking for. King was nervous. The wind was at his back. No scent reached him from the direction in which they were traveling, and he had to depend entirely on his eyes. Each shadow must be mistrusted until it resolved itself into a familiar and harmless form. Then suddenly he barked and pushed the sergeant closer to the canyon wall, just as the rifle spoke. King, you've been hit. It was true. The great dog looked up into his master's face for a second and then dropped to the snow. King. The sergeant lifted him and carried him to safety behind a large rock as the rifle spoke again. It was a head wound. The sergeant had been where the shot came from and fired twice in return. Then quickly he opened a small first aid kit he always carried with him and started to work on King. He'll be all right, boy. We'll stop the flow and have it bandaged in a few minutes. It isn't too deep. Another bullet chipped the boulder in front of the sergeant. The sergeant paid no attention. At last, the wound was bandaged, and he was about to lift the dog in his arms and begin a retreat to the canyon opening when he heard a voice from the top of the canyon wall above him. It's covered, mister! Get your hands up! The sergeant's gun was on the ground beside him. I see your gun! Make a move, boss, and squeeze the trigger! If you want to live, get your hands over your head and stand up! Slowly, the sergeant obeyed. Three men closed in on the sergeant. One carried a rifle. The others had six guns. Yeah. Make sure he has to get another one. Okay. That's all. Take him to the bus and grab it. I'll meet you there. What about the dog? What about it? Well, I'll take a look. Dead. You sure wasted your time bandaging his head, mister. The dog's dead. What do you mean, what about the dog? Get moving. You heard him. Get moving, mister. The canyon opened into a valley. There were several cabins on the bank of the stream, one of them larger than the others. There were sluices as well. Evidently, gold was being washed here. The sergeant and the man stopped in front of the larger cabin. Now keep him out here for a second. I'll report to the boss. All right, one. Stay where you are. Five minutes later, the door of the cabin opened again. All right, Seven, bring him in. You two get back to the canyon. All right. All right. Come on. Move. Well, this is a surprise. You didn't tell me who our visitor was, one. I don't know who he is. Just because he isn't wearing a uniform? A uniform? Now, this is Sergeant what? Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police. A mountain? And since I'm not wearing my mask, perhaps you know who I am, Sergeant. Perhaps. Of course you do. A year ago, I was around White Horse a great deal. I was Clay Borden then. Now, <laughs> I'm nothing. Have you filed on this claim? No, Sergeant. Why should I? If I did, I'd be allowed 500 feet. As it is, I can work the entire valley, and I don't pay the government any royalty. In other words, you're breaking the law. <laughs> In several ways, Sergeant. <laughs> I suppose you followed our sled tracks from the trail. Was it merely curiosity that made you do it? There were other reasons. I see. We must be more careful, one. Never leave here nor come back unless it's snowing. Yeah. Well, what are we going to do with this guy, boss? Dispose of him, naturally. How about right now? I should have said dispose of him in a natural manner. What? Somewhere near the trail, someplace where he might have fallen and hit his head. The next time it snows. Leave it to me. I think we'll have snow before morning. <laughs> well, in that case, we won't detain him long. Tie his hands and feet and throw him in the next room with the stores. Get going, Seven. Can I get some rope from in there, boss? Of course. So you're working this claim outside the law, just so there'll be no questions asked. You're getting your supplies by holding up travelers on the trail. Exactly, Sergeant. And you take their dogs and sleds so they'll meet a natural end before they can report the robbery. You're smart. 
Oh, it's a wonder to me that anyone so smart could act so stupidly. I can return that compliment. <laughs> I'm not sentimental at any rate. <laughs> yeah, one's told me how he got the drop on you. Believe me, if I'd been in your place... My concern over a dying animal wouldn't have stopped me from thinking of my own safety. <laughs> King opened his eyes. His head throbbed, but he lifted it and looked around. He was alone. Where was his master? He staggered to his feet and sniffed the ground. The sergeant and some other man had gone up the canyon. King started to follow the trail. At first, it was only instinct that drove him on, but his strength began to return and his senses became more alert. There were two men ahead. They had built a fire in the shelter of some rocks. His master's trail led past them. Keeping close to the opposite side of the canyon, he crept ahead, ready each instant to break into a full run if he should be discovered. The men were arguing and didn't see him. He did start to run as the canyon widened out. The sergeant's trail led straight to one of the cabins. When King reached it, he circled around to the back. There were two windows covered with oiled paper. He leaped to the narrow ledge of one of them, and during the moment he was able to keep his balance there, he lunged at the paper with his jaw. The paper gave way. Now King knew that he could force his way through. He leaped to the ledge again, pulled himself over the sill, and jumped on the floor. King! Quiet, boy, quiet. Inside the room, King lay at his master's side without uttering a sound. It seemed a long time. I guess he was sound asleep, King. He didn't hear you. Here, chew these ropes. The sergeant lifted his hands to King's mouth, and the dog understood. Quiet, boy. Quiet. King worked hard, and at last the ropes parted. Good. Now I can get these others. A few moments later, the sergeant stood up and started for the door of the other room. He opened the door quietly. King followed silently. The sergeant stopped at the table in the center of the room. King waited. Got it. Loud it, too. The sergeant walked to the cot in the corner. He placed one hand over the mouth of the man who was sleeping there. With the other, he held the gun at his head. Clay, you're under arrest in the name of the queen. Now listen. You're going to get up and dress. You'll wear your white parka and your mask. I say you have an extra parka. I'll wear that. You and I are leaving the valley. I'm going to take my hand off your mouth now. If you yell, I'll have to shoot my way out of here, and you'll be the first to get it. There. What's your answer? Are you going to call for help? Not with that gun pointed at me. But I inspected your ropes. How did you get free of them? It was sentiment that did the trick. My concern for my dog paid dividends. Your dog? He's here beside me. Came in through the back window and chewed through the ropes. The fools! They told me he was dead. I want your answer. Do you take my orders? No, wait, wait. Don't shoot. All right. Get up and get dressed. A few minutes later, both the hawk and the sergeant were wearing white parkas and masks. The sergeant had lighted the lamp and turned it very low. He pointed to pencil and paper on the table. Sit down. Now what? Before you go, you're going to leave a note for your number one man. Tell him that you're getting rid of me and that you may not return for a few days. Tell him not to let anyone leave the valley until you get back. Go on, write. The hawk wrote the note as the sergeant had directed. When he had finished, he handed it to the Marty. The sergeant read it, replaced it on the table and was about to turn out the lamp when he noticed the hawk was smiling. You seem to be amused. Do you mind? You think I've forgotten your guards. <laughs> well, I haven't. What? Just remember it, I'll have a gun pointed at you every second. If you open your mouth, I'll start shooting. Get going. <clears throat> the hawk harnessed his team, but it was the sergeant who drove them, and the outlaw rode the sled beside. As they neared the exit of the valley, they could see the glowing remains of the campfire the guards had built, and the two men lying on the ground close to it. They were wrapped in blankets and sound asleep. But the team started to bark and woke them up. Oh, brother, King, watch this man on the sled. The sergeant ran toward the guards. One of them staggered sleepily to his feet. Uh, who's there? It's Amati. Amati, why uh, you... Oh. Before the man could reach for his gun, a solid right from the sergeant sent him crashing to the ground. Uh, screw you. He stuck a gun to the other man's ribs and picked up both rifles that were lying on the ground. Keep your mouth shut. Drag your partner over and put him on that sled. Make it fast. All right, I'm... The man obeyed right, at once. Right, right. The sergeant called off King, who was holding the hawk helpless. The man who had been knocked out was loaded on the sled with him. The other guard was ordered to run alongside. The sergeant released the brake on the sled and... Hush! Hush on! As the dog started, he glanced back for a second at the cabins a mile back in the valley. There was no sign of pursuit. Well, King, we've got three prisoners, but this job isn't finished yet. So you're not satisfied. You want to capture everyone. Why not? 
Your note will keep them waiting for us. We'll be back with troops in less than a week. Keep them going, boys. It was five days later that the sergeant returned to the valley with a detachment of troops. The guard at the entrance was quickly overpowered. And although the rest of the men put up a fight and they saw the soldiers pouring into the valley, they soon realized it was useless to resist the odds against them, and they threw down their guns. The sergeant saw the man the hawk had called one run into the leader's cabin. The Mountian king went after him. Get him, King! No, no, call him off! All right, boy. It's like seeing a ghost. What is? Seeing you, I, I thought you were dead. How'd you get away from the hawk? I didn't, Lefty. I got away with him. But the thanks for that goes to King. It's all right now, boy. The case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's program. It's not too late. You still have as good a chance as any fellow or girl to win a Schwinn Deluxe Autocycle. Our big, easy contest offers 101 of these fully equipped bicycles, each with a retail value of over $79. Enter today while there's still time. Simply finish this sentence in 15 additional words or less. My favorite college pennant on the Quaker puffed wheat or rice package is... Completing that sentence is easy, fun. First, look for the colorful college flags on the back of packages of Quaker puffed wheat or rice. Then pick out your favorite and write down why on a piece of paper. Send it together with your name and address and one box top from Quaker puffed wheat or rice to Bike Contest, Box 600, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Contest closes midnight, Saturday, October 23rd. Anyone living in continental United States may enter, except employees of the Quaker Oats Company, their advertising agencies, and families. Entries judged on basis of originality, suitability, and aptness. Duplicate prizes for ties. Judge's decision final. All entries and ideas therein become property of the Quaker Oats Company. But hurry, mail your entry today without delay. Send to Bike Contest, Box 600, Minneapolis, Minnesota. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns. Listen Monday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the adventure of... Underground ambush. A snowy night, a shot in the dark, and a girl running toward King and me convinced that someone was trying to kill her. That was the situation that led us straight into an ambush in a deserted gold mine. And enough danger and excitement to make King's rough stand on end. Don't miss the story on Monday. Be sure to hear this exciting story Monday. Till then, this is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>